Okay, here we are back again with yet another Helix video. Um, and this time we're going to be talking about snapshots and kind of setting up our board in one configuration. The thing about the Helix is, my goodness, Alliance 6 has given us so many possibilities for configuring that board to match just about any possible scenario we can imagine. So it's way beyond the scope of this video for me to sit here and tell you that I'm going to um, you know, show you all the ways that this can be set up, right? Uh, we're going to go down to the floor in a second on the Helix floorboard itself because I want to show some people how it works from down there and a few things we can only maybe set from down there. Um, but yeah, the, I could probably do a hundred videos just on different configurations that could be set up on the Helix as far as uh, snapshots, presets, uh, combinations of snapshots and presets or snapshots and stomp boxes or setting the whole thing up as a stomp box. And I will try to probably do a few videos for maybe uh, a lot of common scenarios or leave in the comments ideas that you have for particular ones that you may be having trouble with and want to work on. But for this one here, I'm going to work with snapshots and split the board into snapshots and stomp boxes. So we're gonna have basically four snapshots because the bottom line, if you learn how to do four snapshots, it's nothing to do eight snapshots uh, if that's what you so desire. So, you know, four snapshots is gonna let you know what you need to know as far as setting up your snapshots. And then I thought I'd kind of kill two birds with one stone here and throw some stomp box stuff in too. Um, so what's a snapshot? A lot of people ask that question. Well, one thing that the Helix doesn't have the ability to do is switch seamlessly between one preset to another, right? So, and, and there's good reason behind this, right? Let's say we had a roaring uh, lead sound through a, a Marshall Plexi with everything cranked up with tons of delay and we wanted, uh, you know, the Cosmos echo on that with a particular reverb. But for our clean sound, we just want to press a button and that's going to switch over to like a Fender Twin model with uh, a different reverb with no delay and a compressor. And Well, we can set that up with presets and have a preset for one and preset for the other. But if we have have to seamlessly foot switch between that, let's say in a live situation, where we don't notice any uh, time delay in switching, that's not really possible. Because as soon as we go to switch, the Helix has a lot of work to do processing wise. It's got to load all these new effects and new amps, which are very uh, processor intensive, right? And it's going to take a little bit of time to do that. So even if it's 50 milliseconds or 100 milliseconds, I don't know what it is. I haven't, you know, I haven't looked into those details, but it's going to be enough that if we're playing in a band situation, we have this little cut in our sound that is really going to be distracting to the listener and even more sort of the player where it's like, man, what just happened to my sound? This isn't the way it's supposed to work. So what, he, what the, the folks at Line 6 have done is they've given us snapshots, which allows us to load in what we want, pick an amp or pick two amps for that matter, right? As long as the DSP will allow it to exist in the same patch, right? We, we do have a limit on, on DSP power, which is a reasonable thing, right? They can only pack so much in there. So um, let's say we uh, we did two amps. So we could have a, a you know a Fender Twin type of a deal and a Marshall Plexi if if we have enough processing power, and we could use a snapshot to let's say turn on when we hit snapshot one, it's going to turn off the the the, the Marshall and turn on the Fender, or vice versa. Snapshot two will turn off the Fender and turn on the Marshall. So we could use it that way because Helix has already loaded those in to the DSP into the memory. Let's call it it doesn't have to do much work to access it. It can just basically turn it on or off at will because it's already loaded into the DSP. It's already, it already has it in there, okay? So it can do that much faster. So then we could get these seamless switches between so-called patches, even though it's all in one patch. So a snapshot's basically like a picture of particular settings for our amps, for our effects, for just about any parameter we can imagine, we can tell it on snapshot one, I want these particular parameters to be this, or these effects to be on and these effects to be off. And then on snapshot two, I want these parameters to all switch to whatever else and these effects to be on or off. So it's like a picture of whatever we have put into it to start with. So as you can see here, I have, I just threw up a, a quick um, patch where I used, in, if anybody's watched my previous videos, the Dynamics processor at the end and the EQ is kind of my mastering stage. I'm not gonna go through dialing in a bunch of stuff here because we've already done that, right? We wanna talk about how, how we can assign uh, parameter changes to the snapshots and, and effects changes, right? I have a little bit of reverb, a little bit of delay. 
uh, I decided to throw just for no other reason than just to, to, as an example to throw an optical tremolo a 70s chorus I have a couple cabs uh, the 112 deluxe here with the 121 ribbon uh, four and a half uh, inches back um, this one here actually I meant to put uh, let's go with an 87 one inch back again not not that important uh, right now I have a split between those cabs like we've discussed before I decided to use a new voltage queen amp I did a guitar lesson video uh, just a couple days ago and I tried this out and I really really liked the amp it was amazing and I threw uh, a minotaur okay so that's basically what we're working with now what I want to do is I want to jump down to the floor here and if you guys will join me down there, um, we'll do a really shaky handheld uh, <laughs> video of it since I don't have uh, my proper tripods here. I am away from my, my home studio, which I'll be back to shortly and be able to shoot some better quality videos there. Uh, I'm just going to go down there and explain to you how to set the board up into this sort of four snapshots and four stomp boxes. Um, and if, uh, if it sounds funny and I repeat anything I said, it's because I already shot that part of the video, the magic of video editing. We're going to go down there for a minute, and then we're going to uh, set that all up and then come back up to HX Edit, and then we'll talk about how we can actually tweak these snapshots, all right? Be right back. All right, everybody, so here we are down on the floor. You're going to have to bear with me on the quality of this. I'm doing the whole handheld camera thing as I'm uh, not in my studio, and I don't have my proper tripods and everything, so... Um, I'll be able to kind of move this around and hopefully uh, give you what you need to know. So a couple things I wanted to cover first and foremost is a few settings that are going to be really important when we're utilizing snapshots. Uh, one thing we can't do from the HX edit is set up our uh, pedal board the way we want it to. So what I'm going to do for this video, and I think like I mentioned before, is set up so that we have four snapshots. Uh, um, I don't know if that's going to come through clearly. There's the focus on that, maybe. Four snapshots along the bottom. And if you notice, these top rows are blank here. Let me just go through how we get that. We're going to go up to our uh, menu button here. And we're going to come into global settings. Okay. And we're going we're gonna to go over to where it says foot switches. Now, there's a bunch of options in here. The ones we're going to be dealing with, touch select I want on. And we'll talk about that in a moment. But that's going to be have to do with being able to use the touch capacitive switches to assign pedals um, to the board, which is really interesting. We'll get to that in a second. This is what we want to talk about. Preset mode switches, stomp, snap. You see all sorts of different uh, 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 settings here. Eight presets. That's if we want to use... Uh, just preset mode on the Helix. Uh, we're not going to talk about that today. We're talking about snapshots. Preset stomp, I don't want that. We're going to get in here. Okay, preset snap. I, I'm not going to deal with presets yet. These are all, this goes way beyond one video if we dive into these. And maybe I'll try to cover some of these in future videos. But for now, we want to just stick to um, snap stomp. And if you see what this does, it says stomp snap. Or snap stop. And if you look down here, my snapshots are now on the top row, right? And if I do stop snap, what happens is my snapshots go down to the bottom row and I have blank up here on the top row. So I'm going to stick with this for now. So, so it's whatever setting we feel comfortable with. There's really no right or wrong here. We can do whatever we like with this, right? Um, eight switches just allows in stomp mode, full stomp mode, if we don't want the little presets buttons over here we can actually assign um, stomp boxes to these but again that's not really what we're dealing with here so I'm just gonna leave it at eight switches um, presets up and down this isn't what we're dealing with right now so all I need to do in here to get this setup that I have right now uh, is have stomp slash snap which is gonna be my snapshot controls at the bottom and the ability to add some stomp boxes up here on the top and you'll see why I did that I'm basically setting up four stomp boxes, the ability to have four snap boxes and the ability to have four different snapshots just to give one scenario of what we could use. Another really important feature down here though is going to be this and let's just go up here with our joystick over here and we're going to pop that up over to preferences. Now you're going to notice one thing here. Let me get this in focus. Sorry about the quality of this guys. Uh, it says snapshot edits recall. Now the possibilities here are recall or discard. Now what's that? what that's going to do is as I'm going between my snapshots and editing parameters, do I want that parameter to automatically basically be saved? So if I go back and compare snapshot one to snapshot two, let's say, any tweak I made to snapshot two will just automatically stay where it's supposed to be on snapshot two. Snapshot ones will be different. If I have this set to 
discard though, what's going to happen is if I make a change to snapshot two and then switch to snapshot one without saving, it's going to get rid of those changes I made. It's going to default back to what it was. So if I wanted to keep those changes I made to let's say snapshot two, if I was switching between those two things, sorry about the focus here again, I would have to hit save, I believe twice, and then I could go edit again. So this is kind of an interesting thing. I think a point of a lot of confusion for a lot of folks that are working with snapshots is that they might wonder why they did all this tweaking and then when they change to compare it to another snapshot that all of a sudden their changes were gone and it can be really frustrating. I even found that when I first, first was getting used to the idea of snapshots. So um, I, and again, there's no right or wrong here. There's a bunch of reasons why we would want to use both and somebody else may find their own workflow for this. But what I find I like to do for the most part is set it in recall mode. So any changes I make while I'm switching between my snapshots are going to automatically be recalled. I don't have to worry about, oh, I forgot to hit save uh, and now my, my, my work is gone, you know? So I go recall for now and then maybe once I'm done with my whole pedal board and got it to a point where I'm really happy with it I may come back in and say discard so that let's say I have a situation where I turned a delay off using a stomp switch maybe I assigned it up here which we'll talk about in a minute and I turned it off on my lead sound let's say um, but I really want that to always come on on my lead sound well if I turn that off switched away to another snapshot when I come back that's going to be turned off again because it's just uh, discarding, or I'm sorry, it's just recalling whatever the last state of it was. I hope that made sense. That's kind of weird, but I think you'll see as we go through this what I'm talking about with that. So I'm going to leave that to recall right now. We still have these four blank uh, LCD strips or scribble strips up here, right, which we wanted to assign stomp boxes to. Now, as I mentioned to you before, in this patch, I have a Minotaur Overdrive, I have a, a 70s Chorus, and an Optical Tram. And I want to assign those to have the ability to turn those on and off like stomp boxes on a pedal board. So it's this simple. The folks at Line 6 have packed this with such an amazing feature set that allows us to, to, to utilize it in so many effortless ways. And once we learn how to do it, man, we can just whip through this like nothing. It's really an amazing uh, system. Okay, so what I'm going to do is let's say that this switch over here, my stomp one switch, I'll call it. Um, let's say I wanted to assign that to the Minotaur. So I just take my joystick over here and I simply go over until Minotaur is highlighted. Okay. And then I simply touch this switch. Watch what happens on my screen. It says assign foot switch to bypass selected block. That's what I want it to do. Now it went away, I didn't act fast enough, but I'm gonna do it again. I want it when I press this button to turn on the Minotaur or turn off the Minotaur. So I'm gonna hit that again. It gives me some other options. I'm just gonna hit okay, all right? Now, if you notice down here in my script, it automatically tells me Minotaur. Okay, now I can go back in there and rename that. I, that's not important right now. That you know, we can we can deal with all that stuff later. It's it's very very well laid out in the manual as well. But now what's going to happen is whatever snapshot I'm on, I have the ability to turn the Minotaur on and off. Now this is why I was saying before that that whole setting up here in our globals of either being able to recall the snapshot or discard the snapshot is important because I could turn that always maybe want the Minotaur on on a lead sound uh, and then I accidentally turn it off before I switch away from my lead and it's not going to automatically come back on if that is set to recall. It's going to recall whatever I do last to that particular snapshot, right? So for now we're going to leave it at recall and later, like I said, we'll probably come in and set that back to uh, discard. Okay, so back to our amp. So uh, again, we can go over... Oh, no, I'm sorry, I was at Minotaur. So now you're going to see that the Minotaur is going to turn on and off when I hit that. So let's continue on. Let's go over to our chorus and we'll say, okay, I want to assign my chorus to this pedal. So I'm going to touch and hold it until the screen comes up, hit OK. Now this is going to turn the 70s chorus on and off and we'll do the last one here for our optical trim that I put in. I want it assigned to this foot switch here. Touch that, hit OK. Now I've got my Minotaur Overdrive, able to turn it on and off for any snapshot. My 70s Chorus, able to turn it on and off. And my Optical Trim, able to turn it on. Okay, so let's snapshot. go back to our amp now. One major, major thing here that we have to realize is there's two ways to 
switch parameters and snapshots, either using our, our Helix Floor here or Helix LT or whatever it is we're using, whichever model we're using. And then we have the HX Edit software. I'm gonna show you quickly while we're down here on the floor. Let's say that I wanted my Drive 2 here in the case of the Voltage Queen to be have that parameter change to different settings between snapshots. This is the most important thing we have to remember. To get it to do that, if I simply go and say, okay, I'm on snapshot one here, and I'm gonna to go to snapshot two. Okay, now you can see the light on snapshot two. So now I'm gonna say, well, I want this to go, let's say up to four or four point Okay, so it's four, right, on the on drive two for snapshot two. Now we think, okay, I set that on snapshot two. Now I'll go back to snapshot one. Well, wait a second, nothing changed. It's, it changed to four for all my snapshots. So what we have to do is we have to actually go into the parameter we want, press our controller knob while we turn it. And you're going to notice that the number here is going to change white and get brackets around it. Watch, I'll press and I'll turn. Now we have something here. So I can now switch this down to, let's say two, if that's what we want, okay? And then I can now switch over without saving because I have it set to recall. I can switch to snapshot two. Now look what happened. The old setting of four is still there. Let's say I want more here. I go up to five. Hope that's in focus, guys. It's five, take my word for it. And then I switch back to snapshot one. It's still two and it's still five here. Now if I go to snapshot three and let's say I want that to go up to 8.9. Okay, now I can go snapshot one, two is a still at five, snapshot one is still at two, back to snapshot three, and it's 8.9. That's a really important thing, and I think a point of confusion for a lot of folks with the Helix and, and using snapshots is they don't know how to get these parameters to uh, do what they're supposed to. So if you notice, very important part of this, if I go back up to my menus, to global settings, into preferences right here, Snapshot edits is on recall. So I don't have to keep saving every time I switch down here. I go back out to my amp and now you're gonna see that because I pressed and turned my controller, I've now got it into that white setting with the brackets. That's what we need if we wanna be able to alter that parameter with snapshots. So hope that helps. I think that's everything we need down here. So let's go back up to the computer and deal with HX edit. See you in a minute. Okay, so now that we have that all set up, now we can come up back to our, our preset and say, okay, here's what we wanna do. I want to, first of all, you saw how the snapshots were named, snapshot one, snapshot two, snapshot three. That's not gonna be of much use to us. What we did assign down there when it said Minotaur 70s Chorus Optical Trim, that's more useful. There is a way to rename those, and if there's something you'd rather have, again, we have the ability to do that. That's not really what I'm getting into in this video. Um, you know, you could take the Minotaur and, and name it Distortion, Overdrive, whatever you want, Boost. Uh, whatever suits your workflow is going to be what you want to name it. But we do want to rename the snapshots because what does snapshot one mean? No, it means nothing. One of the beautiful things about the Helix floor is it has these scribble strips built into it. The Helix LT, we could have it so that that's going to be up on our LCD screen, right? So it, it shows us each block up there. So again, very useful, flexible uh, either way, whichever unit you have, right? Um, so let's talk about renaming snapshots. Well, up here in Helix uh, HX Edit is going to be one of the easiest ways. And up here in our snapshot window, right, we can simply pull this down, click on it, left click on it, and it's going to give us snapshots one through eight. Well, we're just dealing with four snapshots, one through four for now, because that's the way we just set up our board, if you remember. So I'm going to go to snapshot one, and I'm going to simply right click it now, and it's going to say rename. Okay, well, here's what I want to do. I want to set up snapshot one as a clean sound. Uh, so let's call it clean and we'll hit save on that. Snapshot two, nothing's gonna be different between snapshot two because we haven't changed anything unless the settings I changed when I was giving the example on the Helix floor are still as such, which they probably should be. It, it will have a different, we'll deal with all that anyways. Snapshot two, let's name, oh, I don't know, um, clean plus, let's say. So we'll do that with a bit of breakup, right? Um, let's. Uh, hit save on that, switch to snapshot three. I'm gonna right click again, rename, and we'll call this crunch. Again, th this is just some stuff off the top of my head. We can call these whatever you desire, and whatever's gonna work for you. And snapshot four, let's just call it lead because I think most of us love to have a patch called lead. Um, always the most fun one to play through, uh, more than likely. Okay, so right now we basically have 
a bunch of snapshots that are going to be almost identical. Now, if you notice here, as we come up back to HX Edit, we just talked about down there about how when we push a controller and turn it, it's going to change that parameter to white with brackets around it, right? And that means I, if I go to snapshot two here, yes, see the same changes we made down there are going to be stored and as they should be, right? Okay, but we'll, we'll deal with that. I wasn't really doing that for any other particular reason other than just to demonstrate it down there. So, I want to get a nice clean sound. Okay, so we say we have our voltage queen. Let's listen to what just comes up. These are basically the default settings that come up when you, when you pull the amp up. Not really clean, I would say. Um, a little bit of break up there. Not necessarily what I wanted to sound like. So let's dial something in here that's going to be a little more clean. Now what I'm going to do right away is I'm going to pull my master back so we're not going to be getting as much of that uh, power amp distortion. Okay. I'm going to crank my channel volume up because that's not going to affect the tone of the amp as far as how much distortion I get. But because I'm going to make this patch cleaner, I'm going to want to max the channel volume out because when I start adding more gain on the other patches, that's going to allow me the ability then to pull the channel volume down so I can match the volumes between these, these uh, snapshots a little bit better. So let's go up to our drive one and pull it right down, see what happens. Okay, we really go down, right, in volume. There, we almost have nothing. So we got to find some sort of match here. Let's both start drive one and drive two at one. Again, almost no sound. There we go. Okay, drive two. Let's bring up drive one a bit more. A little more volume. Bring that master back again. whatever we can do it now that's that's a fairly you know decent clean tone uh, one word about that i really don't go for like ridiculously clean clean tones i, I like a little bit of edge to it right uh, i could even decide to maybe bump that up to two so it breaks a little more and then if if i find for a song it's too much i just roll my volume back to six or seven So that's gonna work. I, again, I'm not trying to dial in an amazing tone here. I'm just trying to get our snapshots set up. Okay, so that's fine uh, for now. Let's just save that. Now, if I switch, let's see what happens if I switch over to snapshot two now, or clean plus. The previous change that we had made on drive two remains. But if you notice, all the other parameters stayed exactly the same. And that's because I didn't do the whole press my controller and hold, okay? So you might be asking, well, how do we adjust that on HX Edit? Which is a great question, and a lot of people I've seen ask that question. So we've dialed in our clean tone, let's say we're, we're happy with that. And one other word before I switch away from that, if we did want to have chorus on on that, we could simply just come to our chorus and turn it on on Snapshot 1. Now when I switch to Snapshot 2, if you notice, the chorus turned back off, but when I go back to snapshot one, it comes back on. So you may decide that... You want chorus on all the time. Well, you can do that as well, and that's gonna be recalled all the time when you come on. Now, the other thing is, I, I don't think we want that because we've also set up, if you remember, the chorus is on a stomp switch as well. So I can be on my clean sound, just go down to my stomp switch here and hit my chorus pedal and turn that on and off at will. Now the only problem with that is if I turn it on and then hit to another snapshot and go back, it's going to stay on because we're in recall mode, if you remember me talking about that, right? So that's why it gets a little tricky with the recall mode versus discard mode. That's why I say once I set up the snapshots the way I want them to sound when I first go to them, and I have all that set up, I save everything and I go back down to my mode and I go to discard. So that if I am on my clean sound and I momentarily want to put my, my chorus on, if I happen to switch to snapshot two or three after that, when I come back on snapshot one, the chorus won't be on anymore. 
but maybe that's not what you want. Maybe you do want it on. So you see, it gives us the flexibility of, of, of I doing it either way. And that's going to be really up to your workflow. That's not for me to decide, no, you should do this or you should do that. That nothing to do with me. So just telling you what the options are. Okay. So let's leave that off for now. So let's go to clean plus where we want a little more, just a little more bite to our sound, right? Now that's all we're going to have it because if you remember, let's go back to here to clean. We were at two and two on the drive settings. So let's go to clean plus now. Let's set that. Okay, so now if I switch between those, it's two and two. Now, I want a little more crunch to that. So I'm gonna go with my drive uh, one and two, and let's just maybe bump those up to three each and see what that does. Really gives it a little kick, doesn't it? Let's go a little bit less on that maybe. Now, here's the problem. Because I th this this one here, 2.5, is gonna be okay because we've already put that into sort of snapshot edit mode. But now that I switch three up here, if I go back to my clean, well, that's changed there as well. Now we've altered our snapshot one. We don't want that. So let's get back here, put that back to where we had it at two, okay? No need to hit save, but I like to hit save every now and then just to make sure everything is working. Let's go back to clean two. Now, how do we get drive two into snapshot mode on HX edit? Well, what we do is we go right over the slider and we right click and a whole bunch of parameters will come up, okay? Expression pedal one, two, three, very X volume. We're not interested in any of these right now. There's a million things we can do there. We wanna scroll that down until we see snapshots. Hit that. Now look what's happened. That is the equivalent thing to going on our controller, pressing and turning. It turns white. We get the little brackets around it. Now, when we switch that parameter on these snapshots, it's going to retain our setting on the previous snapshot and change it per snapshot now, which is awesome, okay? And because we're in recall mode, it's going to keep that without me having to constantly hit save, okay? Like I said, if you're in discard mode, you can make this change, hit save twice, and you're good. So I, I'm not sure if it's a save once or twice. It, up here, I think it's just once. On the Helix floor, I believe you have to hit it twice because it gives you a chance to rename it maybe. Anyways, don't quote me on that, but you'll, you'll see as you do it anyways. So now I go back to my clean one. I have two and two on my two drive settings. Now here I have 2.5. Well, let's move this to 2.5. Now you'll see if I go back to my clean one snapshot, they both move to two. Now they both move to 2.5. Let's hear the difference. Okay, so it's a it's that same sound with a little more of a kick. Now you might say, yeah, but the volume jumped. And you're right. So what we can do is let's go down a channel volume, right click it, go down, same thing, snapshots. Now I've turned that white. Let's let's shave that back by a dB. Now if you notice, if I go back to uh, snapshot one, it's still on ten on my channel volume. Snapshot two goes to nine. Switch between those now. And sorry, let me turn this delay off since we don't want that. And that's going to be up to you how you want to balance that volume maybe you want this on on snapshot two to be even lower in volume okay now it is there you go so clean one for me that volume comes down a bit maybe i go in between Let's just keep it right there. So very simply now, we've set up two snapshots. One that's gonna allow me to play a little bit cleaner. If I want a little bit of a boost to that with nothing but just the amp, I've done that. Okay, let's leave that. It's good enough. You see, I'm not, like I said, again, I'm not trying to dial in a sound I'm gonna use here. I'm just trying to give you a quick example on how we can go through uh, setting up snapshots. Okay, now let's go to our crunch sound, which is maybe, we, now if you notice that, that, when I was goofing around before, that's all the way up at 8.9. So we're now back to the, the, the same settings almost as clean one, right? Well, actually we are, we're at the identical settings to clean one. So we want much more crunch. So let's compare this to clean two, 2.5. Two. Let's say, well, no, let's bump these all the way up to four, maybe bring our master up. We get a little bit more power amp volume, but now, uh, there's my mistake. Did you notice? I moved my master up, right? So we have to remember where that was. I don't think it was around there. That's good enough anyways for, for our purposes here. We need to right click on the master, 
get snapshots. Now we can tweak this and it's not going to affect all the other snapshots we previously did. So now I can bump up the master to say four. Okay, so that, oh, sorry, my volume is down. I was wondering why that wasn't that, that much more overdriven. I had my guitar volume down a little bit. Now this is up to you. You're gonna say, well, how much crunch do we want, right? Oh, I'm sorry, am I on the clean plus setting here? Okay, before we get too messed up here. All right, so we have our clean, master on 10, uh, master on 2.8, channel volume on 10, drives on two. We go to clean two, we bumped our drives up to four. That's not right, I must have changed that. Those were supposed to be back at 2.5. Sorry about this, I didn't realize I was on the wrong setting there. Um, and I want my master back where it was. Clean it, say 2.8. Okay, now we've got that back. Now we go up to our crunch, okay. So we're going to bring these up maybe to four. All right, master maybe up to four and we'll pull this back around 8.7. Now again, the delay is on by default there, so I'll turn that off. Now you have to decide whether that's enough crunch between uh, the, the second snapshot. Let's try the difference, uh, see the difference between those. Now it is louder, not a huge difference in the crunch. So let's, let's be a little more aggressive here. Let's, okay, so we'll pull those parameters up a little bit. Get a little more crunch in there. Um, let's switch between the second snapshot. Now, if you notice the volume has gone up because we've moved the master and the drives up. So I'll just take my channel volume and pull that back maybe to seven and a half, see how that compares volume wise. So if you watch up here, like all my other videos, watch the snapshots change. Here we go from clean to clean to snapshot to the next snapshot. Now you might say, I want it even more aggressive than that. All right, well, let's bump this up to seven and a half and this up and maybe bring our channel volume back a little bit to compensate for that. Snapshot one. Snapshot two. A little more dirt. Snapshot three, crunch. And maybe we want the volume to actually come up a bit on that. Easy enough, right? And again, we have our stomp box mode that we set up on our floor that we can put in our delay whenever we want. Actually, that's the one I, I forgot to assign in the video. I did assign it afterwards, so my other switch on here, if you watch my delay. Okay, I just got a little tiny multi-tap delay going back and forth, quarter note and eighth note back between the ears. Okay, so now we've got those snapshots up. Now let's say, okay, well, let's go to our lead snapshot. And we go back to that and we kind of bounce back to some older settings. So we could say, well, let's let's start off with our crunch snapshot where we have seven and a half on the channel volume, five on the master. Okay, so five on the master, seven and a half on the channel volume. And then we'll bring these drive ones up. Let's just see where we had it on the crunch, seven and a half and 7.3. So uh, let's see, we'll go a little higher on that. But now you might say, well, you know what? That's a little edgy on the tone. Okay, so now I can also deal with other parameters. Let's say I don't want as much treble on that. I go and I right click on my treble, go down to snapshots, and now I could pull my treble back. Maybe I don't want it to be so bitey, right? So now if we go back to our other snapshots, watch the treble. It's going to remain at 5.5 .5 for our clean, 5.5 .5 where it was for our, our second snapshot, our crunch 5.5 .5 when I switch to my lead now. Now the treble's gone down. Maybe I want a little bit more bottom end for my lead. I right click on the bass one and I hit snapshots and I bump that up to uh, whatever. And We've got 
a pretty interesting sound. I have the delay turned on. Maybe I want the delay to automatically come on for my lead, right? So now I've set that. I go back to my clean. Notice the delay went off. I switch over to my clean plus. Delay is still off. Crunch, right? Delay is still off. Lead, oh, delay automatically comes on. Maybe that's what you want, maybe it's not. I don't know, it's up to you, right? Just as long as you know how to do it, then you can assign it however you want it. But I may want something even more searing. So I come up to my distortion block on my lead, which has been off all this time. So I turn the Minotaur on and I say, let's just start working on maybe letting this darken the tone up and start off with a setting of one and see how that... Uh okay, should stay in the right key. Um, and again, whatever you want here. Maybe you want a little bit more and a little bit darker. Maybe you want it even darker, you find it too edgy, right? Again, I'm not really working here to dial that in quite as much, right? Uh, to get the sound I would want. I'm just trying to use it as an example. So let's say uh, maybe a little bit more on that, right? Maybe that's what you want, fine, we save all of that up. Now, you could say, well, okay, what if I wanted to use the Minotaur on my, um, you know, second snapshot, but I didn't want it to have that gain setting? All right, well, we, we go back to our second snapshot and we turn the Minotaur on and we right click the gain setting and we go to snapshots and now we can do whatever we want with this. I could roll that back to 0.9 for this one, right? And then I, when I go to my lead, what happens to that parameter is it jumps up as well. And then I come back here and gives a slight bit of extra boost to, to my clean plus, right? Whatever, again, just an example. So you can see how powerful this is. This is ridiculously powerful. I could switch between any of the parameters on any of these. I could say, well, you know, for my clean patch, I want my chorus to um, have, uh, I don't know, a um, quarter note. Let's, let's do this, so right click on the note sync, go down to snapshots, right? And I'm gonna change this to quarter note uh, modulation. Slower modulation there, okay. And then I say that when I go to my clean plus, I still want my chorus on, but I want it on the eighth note modulation. We can set any parameter using this. Right click on it, or if you're on the Helix floor, right? Press your controller and turn. When it turns white with the brackets around it, you're in good shape, right? You're gonna be able to tweak that. Um, or on here, like I said, right click the parameter, scroll it down to snapshots, click that, and you're good to go, right? So very powerful, guys. Really, really powerful stuff. Um, that's all I'm gonna talk about. I, like I said, I'm always trying to dial in a, a sound that I'm gonna actually use. Some of those sounds may not even be what I would want, but I was just trying to do it really quick to show you how you can tweak this. I hope that helped. Hope that wasn't more confusing than, uh, than necessary. Um, it seems like a really confusing topic. It doesn't have to be. I think once you get your head around it, this is one of the most powerful features on the Helix is the snapshots and lines has done an amazing job implementing this in a way that's really usable in the studio live you know you could be set up in the studio and you know you need um, certain delays and whatever you set up snapshots to be able to quickly access these you know maybe you're, you're working under time constraints you just need to access them really quick you can have that all set up live obviously it's great you could do this for different presets for different songs right uh, if you know one song is just all cleans but needs a bunch of different effects you can set up a preset with that all with your snapshots in that preset 
And then, you know, if it's in between songs, we don't have to worry about that delay of switching from one preset to the next, where it has to load and unload amplifiers. It's just going to give us time to switch there, and then we have our snapshots to work with, you know? Like I said before, I could have set up a really clean, moved this over, set up a really clean Fender amp right here, if the processing power would have allowed me to, right? See, it's gonna give me an amp here. So look at it, US small tweed. Okay, well now I have a US small tweed here, and I could turn that on, you know, on for clean, and this one off for whatever the default settings are, right? If that's what you wanted. Right? Now I go back to my clean plus patch, make sure all my other patches turn off that so we're not stacking two amps on top of one another. And now that's simply, when I go my clean, it's the US small tweed, but when I go to my clean plus, it's not that anymore, it's back to my voltage queen. And it stays there as I move through my snapshots. One other piece of advice when using snapshots, if you are using delays, and we talked about this a little bit in the delay videos, trails, you're gonna want those on. Reverb, you're gonna want trails on. And what that's gonna do, I didn't talk about it too, too much in the delay video, but when I switch snapshots, if I have the trails off, what's gonna happen is when I switch snapshots, it's gonna cut off any echoes that are continuing, okay? Um, let me give you an example here. Uh, so I have it on on lead and off on crunch, okay. So if I have my tails, or sorry, trails off, when I switch, if you notice, I switched if you watch the screen. Let me crank up the feedback here and the mix just so we can really hear it. As soon as I switch, those trails go away. If I turn trails on, now, notice I switch preset, or not, sorry, snapshots, and they remained. So again, that's up to you. Whatever you want to do with it is going to be fine. But All right, guys, I hope that helped. Uh, if there's any questions, please leave them in the comments. Uh, please like uh, the video, subscribe if you don't mind, uh, share the videos, and uh, I'm going to have a lot more coming. Uh, I got some more guitar lesson videos up as well. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in.